Hey, this is Keith with How to Build Your Own Home, and I want to walk you through a job site. Uh, we're going to have some underground plumbing uh, tomorrow. This is kind of a different job site. We made some adjustments because of a couple of factors, and I want to kind of walk you through that. This here was scheduled to be a slab on grade home. It's still going to be that. But given the fact that we had so much rock everywhere, when we started to dig our footings, it was just sloughing off because of the rock. Well, our final concrete is going to be stained concrete, and that would be very, very costly if we did a slab on grade and you can see all the concrete that would ever get sloughed right into there. So what we did is um, brought my mason in here and we did a stem wall. This will accommodate for the 30 inch frost depth that I need, which is right about here. So when you add it all up and I go 12 inches down from my footing and then I have my block and then I have my slab on top of that, I've got my frost depth all taken care of. But the neat thing is we can get the plumbing in here, get it all trenched, then grade everything and grade it all the way to the, the uh, foundation here that we've got put up. But we'll do a, a nine inch turn down. So we'll actually slough it off just a little bit. So we'll like actually be able to bond to this wall. But I wanna walk you through a couple things over here and kind of explain uh, what we did and how you wanna kind of avoid some possible mistakes down the road. Let's walk over here. Whenever you do a, a slab on grade, and I do a, a lot of slab on grade, you want to watch where your, your plumber is going to punch out. Now, I talked with him on the phone, and I have a footing over here all along this wall here. And I did the excavation work on this job. I had it rolled. It, was, it, it passed. You can see right here, <laughs> these divot marks here. I had a big, huge roller come up here right after a rainstorm, and it just... <laughs> compacted everything. It was great. We passed with a 95% compaction test. But as I move away from the hillside, I've got more fill, more fill, more fill. And so that fill gets thicker and thicker and deeper. And I know my compaction is even better here. I passed it here with a 95% compaction, but I don't want my plumber to exit there. And I don't want him to exit here. I want him to exit closer to the hillside, which is right about here. So I am actually going to mark that where he's going to dig underneath the footing. It's going to be probably right about there. I already spoke with him on the phone that I would mark it at least where I wanted it. He can get in here with the track hoe and dig out that way. And our septic system is going to come out of the underneath the footing here and it will come out over there. So that's already marked, ready to go. You notice over here we've got uh, this here's our conduit for power and again that's in the wall. There will be a 2 by 6 wall right on top of this of this when we put the slab up here. This, the slab's going to come up 8 inches right to there. And so we'll have the 2 by 6 wall and this is right inside the cell of a 2 by 6 wall. We've got our U for ground right here which I need to paint orange. I've got an inspector coming tomorrow. We've also got low voltage right here. This is something that a lot of times owner builders miss out on. We've got our cable and we've also got our, our telephone and our Cat5 and other cable in there. And they punch, they go straight down and they punch out that way. So we can actually type in, if you look way, way down there, I've got a low voltage uh, pedestal way down that way. And then this here is going to connect underground to this pole here. A lot of power companies are not wanting to do overhead anymore. They want everything buried in the ground. So this will be buried in the ground all the way over here to that, fire, that power pole. But I didn't want my plumber to dig under this footing here. And I didn't want him to dig too close to this foundation corner. That's one thing I just didn't want to weaken at all. And he'll dig underneath here, make connection with the septic system. And the good thing is it's not going to be much digging for him because the top of the foundation is going to be 8 inches. So if we look at the wall here, this here, that is an 8 inch block. So we take that block, we put that block right there. He'll take that string line all the way across and put another block on top of that. Pull it tight. That block's not going to go anywhere. And that's the top of the foundation. So all he has to do is, is bring his pipe 
and come up to the top of foundation. I told him there's not going to be much digging. He goes, no, you're kidding. I go, no, you're going to like this job. <laughs> so look at all the lack of digging he has. Now I've got a high spot down there, but we're going to backfill all here. So it's going to be pretty easy going for him tomorrow. He's going to be happy about that. Anyway, when you deal with a lot of frost depth, this here is an option for you. I'll do some video when we do the final slab on this home where we'll have a turn down, we'll make connection to the stem wall, we'll actually have a nice clean look. It'll be staying concrete, but we're actually going to save a lot of concrete. That's the key to keep your frost depth limited to just this 8 inch block. I didn't need to have a huge slab come over here and waste a lot of money with concrete in here. We're going to really limit it our costs on concrete. Each block here was only a buck 93. And then the concrete to fill it, well, probably about a buck and a half to maybe $2 to fill each of those with concrete. That's all done, but it now makes it for a rigid structure to form against to then put our slab on, on top of it. You'll see with some additional videos, we'll come up here and we'll, 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 we'll show you this one. I've got some additional video that I can show you, some B-roll of my mason or masons actually installing these when the concrete was poured. And that's the real trick with this whole, tro if this whole process. If you look at this, this masonry block was actually squished right down into the wet cement. So we call that a wet connection or a wet set. You're actually setting this in the wet cement. We had a string line and they just hit that string line all the way across. It was five o'clock in the morning, very early in the morning when we did this, but that saved us a lot of time. They didn't have to now mortar that. That's just, that's not going anywhere. We didn't have to mortar set that. We just set it at the same time we poured the footing. Now we've got a rigid wall. We've got a great place to backfill against. I can now grade against the backside of this. I'm really excited. So this will be a, um, uh, I'm going to do some real insights on this build, some of the headaches we dealt with. I'm going to talk about land issues down the road. <laughs> we had a really nightmarish land issue and what I did and how I, I accomplished it. And uh, just stay tuned because the biggest issue that home owner builders have is buying land. And they, they buy land in the dark. Just go to my site, howtobuildyourownhome.com, go to the very top click on free home site selection ch selection checklist that's a free checklist i give you it tells you what to go through what to look for what to watch out for before before you buy land and in the process of buying that land and what to negotiate for do that do that do that uh, this here land was purchased without that checklist and i had to deal with some of those nightmares during the course of the build and i'm going to tell you what those nightmares are stay tuned for a future post but this here is a great way to save some money on a slab on grade. We're, we're, it's coming along. I've got a fly attacking me. I'll give you some more future posts on it. Stay tuned. This is Keith Couch with How to Build Your Own Home and a fly in his face.